Uh, Atul, stay with us. Uh, let me also bring in Mr. Ramesh Damani, who's with us. He's a member at the Bombay Stock Exchange. You know, I was earlier just mentioning that uh, the Bombay Stock Exchange, the BSE stock is up some uh, six, six and a half odd percent or so. Mr. Damani, uh, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, let me begin by wishing you, your family, your team, everyone, a very happy Deepavali from all of us here, from Nigel, Surubi, me, uh, Atul is here, and of course the entire CNBC team uh, as well. Thank you very much for joining us on this auspicious occasion. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Damani, uh, talk to us about what you make of where we are in this cycle, really, uh, at, a, at a broad level. Uh, do you think we've got a long road ahead of uh, us in terms of upside? Uh, or we are kind of already somewhere in the middle or maybe uh, across the halfway line. What's your sense? Hi, Prashant. Thank you again. And thank you to the entire team for asking me to come to your Murad session. Uh, and I pray that not only your viewers, but all of you have as bright and as illuminated Diwali as the wonderful lights that light up our country on this uh, auspicious day. So thank you very much for having me. In terms of the market, uh, Prashant, as you know, I've been a veteran with almost 30 years in the market. And trying to predict the next 1,000, 2,000 points is always very difficult. But I'm pretty sure about one thing. The next 20% is higher on the index, not lower on the index. So what I've learned over the last 30 years is to remain invested in high-quality businesses and not worry about the volatility that happens. That is a part of doing business. The risk in the market is a permanent loss of capital. I don't think we face that. We do face volatility. There's geopolitical tension. The elections due in India. So markets could be volatile. But I believe that the long-term prospects and the next 20% of the market is almost certainly higher rather than lower. Okay, that sounds fabulous and uh, wonderful to hear, especially on Murad Day. Uh, thank you so much, Ramesh. It's always great to uh, sort of uh, see you. I mean, you're not with us in the studio, but it's great to see you over here. Uh, and uh, season's greetings to you, of course, and everybody at home and in your team. You know, let me ask you this. Since you're saying the next 20% is surely up and not down, let me ask you about the one mega trend that seems to be emerging in the market, and that's just ownership and participation, right? This was a market that was largely, you know, driven by FII flows. It was, uh, that really determined more than anything else what happens next. What is the, the, the next, say, one-year, five-year trend looking like? Because the money's coming in, whether small cap funds, mid cap or large cap, retail money is coming in, and as this deluge of capital flows to the market, uh, you know, could it pose challenges, uncertainties? Could it, you know, at times mask uh, underlying issues? Just how should we prepare ourselves for the deluge of domestic money that's bound to come in? Yeah, uh, great question. Uh, liquidity, of course, is the mother's milk of all bull markets. And the fact that we're getting such stupendous domestic flows is really helping this bull market. No question about that. Uh, I feel India is in a sweet spot, as most of the analysts have said compared to other emerging markets, despite interest rates going higher, because the Indian economy is growing at a much faster clip than the other, other economies. And we are always used to a slightly higher interest rate regime than uh, the rest of the countries. So now the interest differential between, say, India and America mortgage rates are about 1, 1.5%. One so the first time, actually, Indian equities are looking attractive from emerging points of view also. So I think for the last six months, you've seen domestic buyers and foreigners selling. I think we might see a reverse of that in this summer. We might see foreigners also coming into India, chasing the overperformance we have. So all in all, I would remain invested in high-quality businesses. My mantra has always been the same, should be buy a good quality business and stick to it. Ride out the volatility that is almost inevitable, a part of all investment. Hi, good evening, Mr. Damani, and uh, thanks so much for joining me on the show. Nigel on this side. Well, you know, one theme that you identified, and I recall which we spoke about last summer as well, you were talking about some of these railway stocks, and boy, didn't they do well. You know, if you were fixated that PSU is not the way to go, you missed <laughs> out. You know, the banks did well, railways did well, defense did well. How much of the good news is in the price? Do you think it still has a long runway ahead? Uh, Nigel, again, uh, happy Diwali. Uh, Nigel, I feel that if you look back at the history of markets, every secular bull move in India has had leadership. So, for example, in 92, it was the cement stocks. In 2000, the technology stocks. I'm of the firm belief that in this bull market, the leadership is the public sector stock. <coughs> now, what I believe in that, there'll be a rolling bull market there. So, we had movement in defense, then rail, and then banks, as you rightly pointed out. Now, it might be led on to consultancy firms, might be led on to some commodity firms in the public sector pack. So I believe the leadership remains with the public sector stock. And remember that in a bull market leadership move, stocks go up 20, 30x from the lows. 
So I feel that we are witnessing a similar boom. And I think they will really blast off in what we call the third phase of the bull market is perhaps after the election results are known to the market. So I believe that will continue to be a theme. The also other theme that I think is attracting a lot of attention worldwide is the China plus one theme. I think that will resonate for a while because I, uh, China, for example, in the last 18 months has about $160 billion of withdrawal from foreigners' profits in that stock. Now that money is going to find its way to other emerging markets, other supply chain. I think India will get a large portion of that. So this uh, defense theme, this India plus one theme, seem like promising areas to invest in. Other than that, we're also looking at uh, some other uh, themes, but those two are good themes to start looking at. Mm. Uh, Mr. Damani, uh, you're also someone who looks at the <clears throat> global stuff pretty closely. Uh, I, I was speaking with Manish Chokhani uh, two days back, and he was saying, you know, this uh, U.S. fiscal and the money printing, etc., which is going on, uh, and uh, <clears throat> we've always believed that it'll go on. I mean, it's the U.S. dollar for, uh, for, for I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's there, and they're going to print, and it's going to be okay. But he said, well, you know, the day of reckoning, his words, not mine, he said, the day of reckoning is coming, coming closer. Uh, I don't know what that, what that would mean or what that would look like because it's never happened. What's your sense? Should we worry about this kind of stuff? It'll happen sometime in a lifetime and, you know, the implications or when it'll happen, how? I mean, it's impossible, right? Uh, any, th any thoughts at all? We, by the way, had this Moody's action on out uh, the U.S. outlook just uh, yesterday. Go on. Yeah, Prashant, I did hear uh, Manish's uh, snippet about that. Uh, to be honest, as you mentioned, I've been hearing this about the U.S. for the last 40 years. So it's hard to say when it will happen. You know, is it going to happen? Yes, no. I think history, economic history teaches us that no superpower becomes a superpower for more than a century. So it will probably happen. But I think as far as investing, as far as the investable universe goes, I don't think you can place your action according to that. You need to buy good businesses, hold on to good businesses. And I feel uh, I'm going to ride the tide if that happens. Uh, to be honest, to understand this entire geopolitical events that take place, or will the dollar rule lose its reserve currency status, which is what essentially Manish is saying, I'm yeah. not sure I'm ready to call that yet. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Dhamani, before we let you go, I can't help but ask you this. Since you made that big call right now on the show, that uh, the leadership will continue to come from some of these big PSU names, right? Now, since you're telling us that, also tell our viewers how to navigate it, right? Because stock prices, if they keep going you know, higher and higher, you, you don't know what to look at. Valuation, multiples, order book. How do you navigate this? And you have an election coming up. Maybe that poses more volatility and risk. But if this indeed is a big call for maybe the next one year or more, how should investors, again, uh, go through this, own it, you know, avoid the pitfalls, etc.? I know, Subhi, it's, uh, you know, I mean, the leadership is there, so, but I feel it's more of a rolling bull market. Some of the defense and real PSU stocks have actually uh, reached, you know, fairly rich valuations. But a lot of other PSU stocks that are still available at a fairly modest multiple with a fairly good dividend yield. So I would try and rotate a little bit of money out of them. Uh, typically, though, uh, these stocks, defense real stocks, will consolidate and then make a higher peak. So I think the entire PSU basket will probably make a much higher peak, probably in March, April next year, or sorry, in May next year after the election results are due. But in the meantime, there's a second rung of PSU stocks that are unnoticed, undiscovered, that probably will do well over the interim period. So I feel that you should put at least part of your money into uh, the public sector stocks and remain ownership of them, other than other themes that might be working out in the market. But I think what is, if you see, Subi, what happened is that uh, this market rewarded people who bought the undiscovered and the unfavored stocks. Mm -hmm. You look, everyone liked the private sector banks and the public sector banks performed. You look at everyone liked the uh, bigger exchanges and the small exchanges performed. So the market has tended to favor uh, the undiscovered, unloved stocks because they were so deeply underowned. And yet the prospects are pretty good for those businesses. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Damani, thank you so much for joining in. Uh, fantastic to hear from you. And once again, wish you a very happy Diwali to you and all those uh, around you as well. Thank you for joining in.